We have all heard of Russia, but do you know, earlier in the 19th century, Russia was ruled by a royal family. Today we bring you the story of a royal family which managed to rule Russia for more than 300 years, and how they lost everything in just 8 days. This is the story of House Romanov. So let's see how the House Romanov came to power. The Rise the story begins on the 16th of January, 1547. It was winter in Moscow and spring was still two months away. But before spring emerged an emperor who became the first Tsar of Russia. And it was a 16-year-old boy, Ivan IV, also known as Ivan the Terrible. Yes, that's the name they gave him. He became the first emperor to be given the title of Tsar, also known as Emperor. But the story for Romanov's family started when the Tsar married Roman's daughter Anastasia Zakharina on the 13th of February 1547. It is said that the royal family called 500 to 1500 eligible girls to select a bride for our Ivan, and she left everyone behind to become Tsaritsa of Russia, or the Queen. It was the end of summer and the Tsaritsa left the Tsar with six children behind her in the month of August 1560. The reason for her death remained unknown to the king till he died. His capability as an emperor made Russia powerful and kept the enemies away. But like every other man, he died on the 28th of March 1584 with a stroke while he was playing chess. Quite a way to die. Fortunately for Russia and for the assembly of Russia, they had a successor, Fyodor. He became the second czar of Russia, but his rule didn't last for a long time. He ruled Russia for 14 years, but Fyodor left no successor behind him, and this led to dynastic crisis. This lack of king put the National Assembly in great distress. Then, finding no king for the land, the National Assembly of then Russia selected Boris Godunov as the new czar. Boris was the brother-in-law of Fyodor. But soon, in a dramatic way, entered a man, an imposter. From where he came, nobody knew, but he claimed to be the younger brother of the last legitimate czar. This imposter snatched the rule from Boris Godunov, and soon, the imposter was killed within the royal palace brutally, and Russia once again became a country with no king. But this time, it was far worse than anything Russia had faced. The two neighboring countries of Russia, Poland and Sweden, saw the situation as an opportunity and started expanding their territory, entering the lands of Russia. Russia lost Karelia, Novgorod, and Smolensk. These were huge blows for Russia and its pride. Now Russia needed an emperor or accept their fate in the hands of their enemies. You remember this guy, Boris Godunov. Well, he had a brother named Patriarch Filaryet. When Godunov became Tsar, he forced his brother to take the monkhood, fearing he would give him competition in the future. It was a time of desperation for Russia, and in such time, the royal assembly turned to Godunov's brother Patriarch, but they found out he was captured by the Polish army when he was in Poland for some political mission. It was the year 1613. Russia was deep in the sea of trouble. They had no king, their land was being constantly captured by neighboring countries. Citizens of the land were in fear, and to make it worse, famine had hit Russia. Seeing this situation, 1,000 members of the assembly began their journey to Moscow. These were noblemen, merchants, and town freemen. They gathered to decide the fate of Russia, which would change Russia and the world we know now. After much discussion, the delegation selected a 16-year-old boy, Mikhail Romanov, son of Patriarch Filariet, the same guy who was captured by the Polish army, and Mikhail became the new Tsar of Russia. But before the announcement of the new emperor, Mikhail and his mother were living a peaceful life in a small village which was 500 miles away from Moscow. Convincing Mikhail and his mother Senia Ivanovna Shestova was not easy, but the Assembly of Russia managed to persuade young Mikhail and his mother to take up responsibility of the Tsar and thus raised a great Tsar of the Romanov house. This could have been a big gamble, to give all the responsibility to a 16-year-old boy who had been away from politics for a long time, but the gamble was played well. The first task of the new Tsar was to regain the land which was captured by Sweden and Poland, and the second was to free his father who was held captive by the Polish army. Mikhail managed to free the land and capture his father by signing two peace treaties with Poland and Sweden. These peace treaties are called Peace of Stalbovo of February 17, 1617 and Truce of Dulian of the 1st of December, 1618. The reign of Mikhail Romanov saw many territorial expansions like the conquest of Siberia. He is considered one of the greatest in the Romanov house. 
His rule lasted for almost 35 years and it ended in the year 1596. Micaiah left behind a nation which was big and strong, but most importantly, he left a legacy behind him. Okay, folks, the story becomes messier and more interesting from here. The responsibility of ruling Russia was taken by Mikhail's only son, Alexei, who was not as great as his father, but he managed to make his way to lead Russia out of trouble. Upon the death of Alexei, a power struggle emerged among the royal families, but finally, Peter the Great became the new emperor in the year 1682. He was respected by people for his work like ending Swedish supremacy in the Baltic and establishing an imperial Russian navy and many great things. Maybe that's why they called him great. Anyway, he also died and after his death, another power struggle began. Many came and went. So the year was 1754. A new Tsar sits on the throne, Paul I, who was the great-grandson of Peter the Great. He was proud to be the great-grandson of Peter the Great, but his pro-German sentiments made him highly unpopular among the Russian nobility. To push it further, this Tsar was highly unpredictable. He lost the trust of the people, and because of this lack of trust, he was assassinated by his own officers at the age of 46. This assassination shook the entire country, but he had left his successor. From 1801 to 1881, for another 80 years, his sons and his grandson Alexander II would rule the land. Alexander II was different in many ways. He was smart and handsome too. He made the military strong. He also ensured to maintain the peace with Europe and above all, made Finland free. By now you would have known that this power is a blessing for a few, but a curse for many. Alexander II was also assassinated with a hand bomb which was thrown at him, and the year was 1881. By now, the time was moving fast. The world was developing and new ideologies regarding freedom were growing in Russian society. But yet, a few years of the ruling were still left in the Romanov family. After Alexander II, there was the new Tsar Alexander III, who ruled for 10 years. And after him, there was one more, Nicholas II, who is now known as the last Tsar to rule the land. Next, we move to the downfall of the Romanov house. The loss of Russia in the world war against Japan collapsed the Russian economy, which led to a poor life for the people of Russia. Due to that, the anger which was boiling in the hearts of people against the social injustice and economic unrest bursted out on the monarchy in the year 1917. The day was the 8th of March when a mass protest burst out in St. Petersburg without any planning or leadership. It saw mass protests, attacks on police, and destruction of monuments. It was so huge that even the Tsar couldn't control it. A new provisional government was formed replacing the Council of Ministers of Russia under the leadership of Georgi Lvov. Many new systems were formed to run the country which would satisfy the people. Well, the Tsar and his family were arrested just to satisfy people, but the royal family still had good terms with the provisional government till October 1918. Another revolution took place in October of 1918, and this revolt threw away the provisional government. By getting no support for the government, the royal family moved to a small town in Russia, Yekaterinburg, and it proved to be the wrong move. It was the night of July 16, 1918, that the entire Romanov family was captured and executed. As if that was not enough, everyone who was with the royal family was captured. Even the head cook was executed that night and thus ended a long legacy of the House of Romanov, which managed to keep Russia powerful. We hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon for regular updates.